Now welcome in to help us officially tip off our coverage of the West Coast Conference Tournament on BYUSN, the interim WCC Commissioner Connie Hurlbut. Welcome to BYU Sports Nation. Hi, Thanks so much. It's great to be here with you today, and it's great that with this great setup to showcase our tournament this year. I wish I had a coat like yours. I'm a little cold at it's the moment. It's chilly I, I know they're going to – we got – I've been here before, especially on Thursdays. You need to you need to layer up a little bit. Yeah, yeah. I thought we were seasoned vets, having yeah. been here for a long time. Uh, no, we don't have games for a couple hours. They'll turn on the right. Heat, whatever. Exactly. How, how you feeling about this edition of this tournament, which certainly is unique in that it's the final one with the ten teams in BYU. Yep, we're feeling really great about it. I mean, it's been a fantastic season on both the men's and women's side, and to be able to join together in the culmination of the regular season and here and get get to our postseason, we feel great. Our partners here are fantastic. You know, we, we're showcasing the arena i think our fans like it um we've got a couple extra things going on for our student athletes this year um you know the the you know it'll be different next year our bracket will be different it'll be kind of fun and interesting to see what our administrators and presidents decide to do with that um but we're really excited about being back we've got our hall of honor back um that's that we haven't done that since 20 since before the pandemic so it's great to be able to showcase the um experiences and and amazing accomplishments of representatives of each of our 10 institutions. We have our first all-female class in that. Wow. Uh, it was not at all mandated by the mm. conference that females be fit, be um, selected this year. Um, but in light of the 50th anniversary of Title IX, it's a tremendous cool. statement for our conference and the fantastic female student-athletes that have mm. come through our doors. And, and we call a lot of those women's sports at BYU and in the league, and it's a great league for that. Uh, there's some tremendous athletes, some tremendous teams that come out of so the So many the legacies. Yeah. 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 I, I think it, it really is astonishing to some way to look at you know a non-power five conference like us um with the amazing record we have of success at the nca level with so many of our sports we're not you know obviously basketball is a huge focus for the wcc but when you look at our ability to win national championships in women's soccer in men's golf in cross country um it's a phenomenal record for us and we're very very proud of it hey women's volleyball uh, with byu sure. in san diego san in the diego past getting year. To the final got four. to the final four yep. awesome just, it's year. been incredible exactly. to watch it's really exciting well, we appreciate the upgraded seat. It was very kind <laughs> yeah, of nice. you this is great. to grant That's us awesome. this set for our halftime and bridge shows and certainly to do some BYU Sports Nations. But you mentioned that there are some other different nuances. Um, what are the specifics of that? What's going to make this 2023 tournament different than years previous? Well, again, I think we're, we're going to be much more closer to capacity than we have now that COVID has fallen back. So I think we're going to have that amazing WCC energy in this building. And I'm really excited to have that back for our student athletes. Um, I think that, you know, we've, we've upgraded where we've got a tribute now to Bill Russell, which is part of our legacy and part of our commitment to social justice. Um, we're doing a little bit. I'm not going to give any real secrets away, but we're doing a couple <laughs> extra things to enhance the student athletes experiences when they get here. Um, and we're just excited to build on what is a good event and continuing to keep mm. it as a premier division one basketball tournament. Uh, Gloria Navarez uh, took the Mountain West Conference Commissioner job, so certainly your life has gotten busier. Um, what's it been like to sort of interact with the NCAA basketball tournament committees to lobby for your teams as many as possible? On the women's side, certainly feels like a one-bid league if Gonzaga's the champ. Portland, good season. Mm -hmm. Probably need to do some damage here. Mm -hmm. On the men's side, probably a two-bid league at this point, obviously, mm -hmm. with St. Mary's tremendous season and, of yep. course, the Zags. Yep. We spent a lot of time um, with our senior staff and our external team working with the NCAA men's and women's basketball tournament committees to um, make sure that the accomplishments of our teams are very well known. I think, you know, and, you know, I think we, we go out of our way to make sure we kind of understand why at, on the women's side Gonzaga has been the target. It's our job to make sure they understand say if a Portland or someone else mm -hmm. um, should win this weekend, um, understand more about that team so that they're seated appropriately. You can't you can't just all yes. of a sudden drop a name into a hat and have them say, oh, gosh, we didn't haven't really talked about, you know, Pepperdine that much. But we really try to make sure they have a, a broad understanding um, to a you know, pretty good depth of our league so that we can, again, make sure our teams are positioned with the best poss possible seed if they get in the tournament. And men's uh, Santa Clara and LMU are certainly mm. interesting. Um, Santa Clara has been a big surprise. Pajemski was unbelievable. This yep. Year. What amazing. What an amazing add to that team. Yep. Yeah. Interim West Coast Conference Commissioner Connie Hurlbut is with us on BYU Sports Nation. We're live from the Orleans Arena. I know you probably can't answer the question, but I have to ask it because of obvious the departure of BYU. And with the growing popularity or uh, the growing status of the WCC, mm -hmm. 
there are a lot of schools that are knocking on your door. Mm -hmm. Um, So what are the expansion talks like for the West Coast Conference upon the departure of BYU next year? Um, so far, the the this is a presidential issue for the conference. This is where this is decided and determined. Um, and the last time there was significant conversation, the, t- the decision was at that point to remain a nine-team conference at this time. And, uh, you know, I, I can't speak for the entire organization. My boss is right there. I'll get in trouble. But I will. Um, <laughs> it's been an amazing fit the last uh, 12 years for BYU. And hopefully it's felt the same from the league, and, and, and I think we felt that. But it's been awesome, and we still have games to play, mm-hmm. certainly in baseball and softball and mm-hmm. basketball. But um, it, it's sort of emotional to come back here and feel like, oh, this is it. This is the last time. Yeah. We've been here for a dozen years. Yep. And it's fit, uh, obviously, in terms of private Christian institution, West Coast. It's just been awesome. Um, yes. How has kind of the league um, dealt in this last year with like, hey, let's let's make sure we have a great year with BYU in the league? I appreciate you saying that because I, I, I think it, it's been a very strong two-way street from the, the institutions of the conference, the conference perspectives in BYU, tremendous partners, tremendous ad. Um, and it's been it's been wonderful. I think you know there's been it, the the I can't say enough. I mean, again, they, they're so they're just so easy to work with, and they're wonderful. And we will miss them because I think they do bring something special to our league. Um, both again because of the institutional fit, and also obviously some of the some of the successes they've had in so many sports that kind of make us stronger. Um, you know, I wish everybody the best on the way, and it's certainly an understandable decision. And um, my son's a TCU grad, so I'm not sure how much I'll be rooting on the Cougs, but <laughs> I'll do what I can when I can. And it's funny because there's certain places where we've learned, hey, it's hard to win. We may not want to schedule that game. In Moraga? I don't want to be ready to play in Moraga. It's hard <laughs> yeah. to win in Moraga. You know what I mean? Sure. But if a neutral site, St. Mary's, came up again at some point, yeah, yeah. that's I, I, to be I, I think fun. Those, I think those yeah. relationships are grounded. As you mm-hmm. said, you can't, you can't interact with those institutions and those teams for that long and not have a sense of whether you want those relationships to continue. Yeah. And, and you've got to play the hard games on the road. You got you got to do that. And frankly, yes, absolutely. Mm-hmm. And frankly, there are certain sports where we we will actually miss the WCC more than going to the Big Twelve. Like women's soccer, women's soccer is amazing. Yes. like the Big Twelve is good. It's not as good as no, the right, WCC. Right. There are certain sports like that. Yeah, yeah, our institutions have committed to a lot to national prominence in a wide range of sports, and I think that's what one of the things that makes the WCC so special. So I, I joked with Gloria Navarez a, a number of years. Again, she has now moved on to the Mountain West. We wish her the best. But she would always say, Spencer, once the games tip off on Thursday, I can just have this collect, like this big sigh of like, okay, we're here. The game, the games are we going. got to the game. Yeah. Do you feel the same way? Not until like, Tuesday night. Not until Tuesday. <laughs> <laughs> not until Tuesday night. There's something good about being here, but I don't get that deep breath till Tuesday night. <laughs> What's your favorite part about this whole experience i think the energy in the building you know i think you know when when we when our even just yesterday for practice you know when we had our eight teams in for their practices the teams that are competing today um there's just a a strong energy and there's a you know it's just it's exciting and i think again we go into this tournament with some real big questions about who's going to walk out with a trophy on on tuesday and that makes it more exciting it's never guaranteed, and no. that's what makes it beautiful. You kind of walk in thinking games. the Zags it's, win no, it, you know, just, but you yeah. never know. Never, you never a guarantee. Know. Yep. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, you've done a fantastic job in a very unique scenario, and we appreciate you spending some time with us and giving us some great insight. Thanks so much. Again, it's great Thanks, to have Kevin. you here, and we're really excited about this, your upgrade. Hey, thank let's you. go. Upgraded, Upgraded seats. Yes, Upgraded seats at yeah. no cost, right? For Spencer, this is normal <laughs> on a plane, not oh, for me. Oh, my goodness. Okay,